What's up, Zoe Those Kids? I am super excited to be here with you guys today. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. Whether you're here watching for church, or you're out in the interweb watching and figuring out questions and answers for God's big plan. I'm super excited you're here. Today, we're talking about Joseph. Now, if you know anything about Joseph, it's a pretty crazy story, right? In fact, I want you to take some time. If you've got siblings, think about it. Think about the worst thing your siblings have ever done to me. Uh, for me, it reminds me of the time that when me and my little brother were younger, we fought all the time. And one time I made him mad, and he had this little toy golf club, and I was running from him because he was trying to hit me with it. And I rounded the corner, and he was right there, and bam, right in the middle of the forehead. I actually still have a scar up here from where he hit me with that golf club when I was younger. I was pretty mad about that. There's been plenty of times where he's made me angry, but... I don't think any of your brothers have ever beat you up, thrown you in a hole, and then sold you into slavery. No, I don't think anybody's been that bad. Yeah, we're going to learn about that today, and I don't know about you, but that's pretty crazy. So let's watch today's story, and then we're going to dive into what it means for us. Jacob had 12 sons but Joseph was his favorite. Jacob's other sons hated Joseph. One day, Jacob sent Joseph to check on his brothers who were tending to the sheep. The brothers saw Joseph coming and they made a plan to get rid of him. They sold Joseph as a servant to some travelers going to Egypt. Then they convinced Jacob that wild animals had killed his favorite son. <laughs> Jacob was very sad. Meanwhile, the traveler sold Joseph to an Egyptian officer named Potiphar. The Lord was with Joseph and made him successful at everything he did. Potiphar put Joseph in charge of many things, and Potiphar was happy with him. But Potiphar's wife lied about Joseph, accusing him of doing something he didn't do. Hey! Potiphar was angry, and he put Joseph in prison. God was still with Joseph and blessed him, even in prison. God gave Joseph the ability to understand the meaning of dreams. Years passed, and Joseph was forgotten in prison until Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, had two dreams. He sent for Joseph. Joseph explained the dreams. Egypt was going to have seven good years with plenty of food, followed by seven bad years of no food. Joseph told Pharaoh to save food during the good years to be used during the bad years. Pharaoh realized that God was with Joseph, so he made Joseph second in command in all of Egypt. Joseph stored away food during the good years. Then, during the famine, people came to him to buy grain. One day, Jacob sent ten of his sons to Egypt to buy grain. The brothers came to Joseph and bowed down. Joseph knew who they were, but they did not recognize him. When Joseph was ready, he told his brothers who he was. I'm Joseph, he said. Don't be afraid. God sent me here so I could save your people, a remnant from the famine. Joseph's brothers went home to bring all their family and belongings back to Egypt. Jacob hugged his son Joseph, and they cried. Jacob's family was blessed in Egypt, but Jacob got older and died. Now Joseph's brothers were afraid Joseph would punish them for what they did to him. Joseph said, you planned evil against me. God planned it for good to bring about the present result, the survival of many people. Joseph comforted his brothers and spoke kindly to them. God had a plan for Joseph's life. He allowed Joseph to suffer in order to rescue a whole nation. God planned for Jesus to suffer so that many people from all nations would be saved. Wasn't that story crazy, guys? I mean, can you believe the turn of events? You see, Joseph 
thought he was just going to live a normal life. He was his father's favorite, and he thought he was just going to get by real easy, his fancy coat, right? Uh, but sorry, he started having these dreams, and he couldn't shake them. And something crazy happened. His life flipped all the way upside down. He was left for dead, sold into slavery, put in jail for years and years and years, but finally God's plan came to fruition. You see, last week we talked about God's plan. We talked about Abraham. And this week we're talking about his plan with Joseph. You see, there's so many things that he does for us. You see, he works in mysterious ways ways and we don't if they don't even make sense right they don't seem logical we can't make sense of them i'm sure joseph was sitting there in his jail cell thinking why me what did i do to deserve this right he could have been angry he should have been angry at his brothers he could have been angry at god and his plan he was stuck in jail right joseph's story is crazy but we see that it has a purpose so let's look at it in here. We're going to be in Genesis chapter 41, verse 37 through 40. So you guys read with me. It says, Joseph's suggestions were well received by Pharaoh and his officials. So Pharaoh asked his officials, can we find anyone else like this man so obviously filled with the Spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since your God has revealed the meaning of the dream to you, clearly no one else is intelligent or as wise as you are. You will be in charge of my court. And all my people will take orders from you. Only I sitting on the throne will have a rank higher than yours. You see, that's kind of the peak. That's the climax of the story. Joseph works his way from a slate, right? He ends up being lied about, thrown into jail, and stuck there for years. But wherever Joseph goes, good things happen to him. He interprets dreams. He gives wisdom. And people love him. Why? Because God had a plan. You see, ultimately, his brothers and sisters, his whole family ended up needing help. His whole nation, right? If you remember, uh, the, the whole nation of Israel was right there. It was those 12 brothers. Later, the 12 brothers are the names of the tribes of Israel. These were the core. This is what began the Israel's nation. And they were there, and they needed help. A famine had come to the land, and God knew the famine would be there. And so God made a plan. Even if it meant that Joseph had to endure through trials, through pain, through loneliness and heartache, God had a plan and Joseph trusted that plan. And we can trust God's plan too. You see, ultimately, Joseph saved the nation of Israel by enduring those trials, through going through suffering and pain and loneliness. And for us, Jesus endured that same pain. In fact, Jesus endured so much more. He endured ridicule. He endured being made fun of, beaten, killed on a cross. But he rose again on the third day. And Jesus ultimately saved the world. Where Joseph saved his nation from the famine, Jesus saved the world from their sins. And so now we have hope in Jesus. And we can trust that there's a plan. And whether it's hard or easy, whether it's short-term, long-term, or middle-term, whatever it is, God's plan is going to work out. And we have to trust His plan is good. So I want to challenge you guys. Where is God calling you to work? Maybe it's showing some kindness to your teachers. Maybe it's offering something to your siblings. Whatever it is, guys. Take time this week and show kindness to those around you. And follow God's plan. Listen for His plan and obey it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm going to see you guys next week with our next episode. Bye.